Hello everyone, this is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Luke chapter 17, verse 10, as well as 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 5. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this scripture conflation. Thank you for speaking to us through your word, Lord God, giving us prophetic word through your word, Lord God, word that is current, word that is rhema, word that is for now and for our lives. We receive it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, let's get started. Luke chapter 17, verse 10. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, you are unworthy servants. We only done. Oh, we have only done what was our duty. All right. We are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. All right. And so this is the um the portion of scripture where Jesus is talking about um well like a it's kind of like a parable um where Jesus is saying like the slave that goes out would you say to a slave that goes out into the field um to come in when they're done with their work and just sit and recline no you would say come and serve me um dress yourself serve me and and then when you're done then you can receive um your food and and sit and and do you know relax basically and so and he said, so also when you have done all that you were commanded, say we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. That should be our heart towards God. Lord God, I haven't done anything good except what you have given me. I'm an unworthy servant. You have made me worthy. You have allowed me into your presence. You have allowed me to be a part of your plan and your kingdom, right? We we are unworthy servants. And yet Christ is the one who makes us worthy. We're not, we're not doing righteousness and, and, and being perfect. No, that's not our position. Our position is servants and servanthood and being thankful for being you used, right? Being thankful for, for having a place in the kingdom of God. We were unworthy servants. We have done what was our duty, right? This is what the Lord has wanted us to do, has required, has required of us and, and, and provided for us. He provided a plan for us to walk in. And, and it's not us who is doing it. Our righteousness is as filthy rags, right? Our, our righteousness is, is nothing. It, it, it does not match up to the standard of God. We need to be thankful that we are included in, in what God is doing. So it says we are unworthy servants. We have done only what was our duty. All right. And so it's conflated today with second Kings chapter two, the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that Today, the Lord will take away your master from over you. And he answered, yes, I know. Keep quiet. I like that scripture. So um, this is the prophecy. Well, it's not the prophecy. They are. Well, yes, it is the prophecy because they're prophets um, of, of, Je of Elijah being taken up into heaven on a chariot right and so this is current for us this is rhema right the, we are the servants of the lord and we know that something is about to happen we we can perceive it can you not perceive it can you perceive it say yes <laughs> we perceive that something is about to happen we perceive that the lord is about to move and you know what we are the servants we need to be thankful that we are included and we need to know when to be quiet and when to move, right? We need to know how to operate. And that's why scripture conflation is so important is to, to hear a current word from the Lord as he speaks, as he tells us, as he relays his word to us, right? So, so if the Lord is speaking, we need to perceive it. We need to be thankful that we're a part of it and not act as if we are the ones coming up with it. We're not the people. It originates from heaven above. We receive it. We believe it. We speak what he says, speak, and then we're quiet. We don't speak extra. We don't, we don't do a bunch of extra. No, 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 no. This is not of us. This is of the hand of the Lord. Amen. And so I just love the fact that the way that the Lord um, conflated this was through a, a, a prophetic um, 
a prophetic word of rapture because this is rapture in in the bible right when elijah was taken up into heaven on chariots he was raptured he never experienced death he was taken away right and and there is a taking away coming right we can perceive it we believe for it we know that the lord said it was coming and you know what we're going to keep working until the day is done we're going to keep out into the field until the master calls us in And even when he calls us in, if he tells us, okay, stand here and serve me, then we're going to serve him even there. And we're going to serve him over there. And don't worry, you're going to receive your reward. Don't worry, you're going to receive justice. You're going to receive what is your just due at the end of the day, right? Because he is a faithful God. He is a God who gives what we are supposed to have. He's not going to hold back from us. He is going to, to give us exactly what we need in the hour that we need it. But when we get to heaven, we're going to receive that reward. Don't worry, right? Some of us, this is a season, the Holy Spirit was speaking to my heart before I turned this on. This is a season of, of the enemy convincing people to be weary in their well doing. There are lots of spirits of oppression right now um, for the people of God um, to try to get you to stop and give up to try to get you to to give in and be tired, right? Um, have you ever felt like you were doing something for the Lord and you felt just so, so tired? And then the moment you stopped doing it, all of a sudden the tiredness went away. That's a spirit. That is an oppressive spirit. That is a spirit of of, of sleepiness in the spirit, right? That is a spirit of, of, of depression and, and causing a darkening so that you might stop doing the will of the father. Don't be weary in well-doing. You will reap a harvest if you faint not. Do the will of the father. Bind up that spirit and keep marching forward. Say, Lord, I'm going to march forward. If I have to pass out marching, I'm going to keep walking for you. I'm going to keep working for you. I'm going to keep plowing for you. I'm going to keep planting seed for you. I'm going to keep doing your will until the day is done and you retrieve me from the field, Lord. He has work for you to do. He has, he has a will for you to walk in. You just need to be thankful that you're a part of it and keep on moving. You're at the end. Don't get to the end of the race and give up and give in. That's what the enemy wants us to do. We need to know we're at the end. Sometimes the the finish line is right around the corner and we can't see it, right? And, And you want to give up, you want to give in, but the end, the end of the race is right there. And, and we're just pushing, pushing. Oh, there's another turn. No, that is the turn. That's the end. We need to keep pushing and know that the end is just around the corner. God is with us. He's letting us know that this is it. Push the hardest you've ever pushed. This is it. Don't let that oppressive spirit take you over at the end of the race to try to steal your crown. God is with you. He has a great reward for you. But when you are out there and you are called in, don't don't stop working. Let the Lord at that point instruct you on what to do. It says, do you know? No, let me go back. It says, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. That should be our attitude. I'm only serving the king. You should see yourself on a knee, taking a knee, bowing before the king. I have only done what was my duty, my king. I am an unworthy servant, my king. I have only done what was my duty. You are the one who is worthy of praise. Help me to get done with this duty. Help me to do it to a completion, Holy Spirit. Help me to complete the duty that you have set before me. It says, we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. Be positive, be, uh, be uplifting, um, operate in those spirits and, and bind up that spirit of oppression. Seek the, the Holy Spirit so that you may bear the fruit of the spirits, right? And, and, and put on your whole armor every day, being repentant constantly and, and putting on that whole armor that you may stand against the wiles of the devil. He's after you because this is the end of the race and he's trying to steal crowns. Don't let him steal rewards from you. Don't let him steal things from you. Walk forward in the race strong because this is it. Amen. 
All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. We know that the the finish line is right here. We perceive it. We know that it is soon to come, Lord God, where we'll be taken away. We can perceive it. Lord God, help us to keep our mouth shut until you tell us to speak. Help us to, to keep our minds focused. Help us to keep our hand to the plow. Help us to keep our faces forward in this hour. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. All right, you guys, may the, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God. Forgive me of all my sins. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself. Um, when he comes to redeem his church, the Holy Spirit is inside of you to lead you and guide you into all truth. That means he's going to help you in all the decision making in your life from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, from the job you take to the person you marry, from the food you eat to, to where you're going to go today. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. So listen to his voice. It's a still small voice and listen to his voice. And he's not going to lead you wrong. One of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down with his word, open up his word and read it. As you read the word, ask him questions and sit and be quiet and wait for an answer. That stillness that you experience, that knowing is the Holy Spirit. He's going to lead you and guide you into all truth. All right. And so go out and be baptized. The Holy Spirit will lead you in all those things. Um, fellowshipping with other saints. Um, God, Jesus said to not forsake that go out and be around other people of God. Do not just stay in your house and, and do church on TV. No, go out and, and, and be around other believers so that you can be sharpened in the word of God. Um, go out and make disciples of all men and do the will of the father, everything that the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care. <laughs>